Hello everyone and welcome to our Lean Six Sigma lesson number two. The main goal behind these lessons is to simplify the Lean Six Sigma concepts and to help you to better understand the measure tools used in the DMAC technique and apply it in your work responsibilities area and participate in improving the level of quality for the products and the services with a higher level of customer satisfaction. In the last session, we went through a quick introduction about the Six Sigma and we defined it as a quality improvement methodology that um, relies upon statistical tools. And we highlighted that its major role is to remove or reduce the defects, reducing the variations, and increasing the level of customer satisfaction. We also discussed the calculation of the sigma level for a group of discrete data, which was the DPU technique, which relies upon counting the defects. Um, in that lesson, we will explain the histogram and the standard deviation as I think that it would be better to ensure the common understand for uh, that application, the histogram and the calculation of the standard deviation prior going to the process capability. So we might consider that lesson as a preparation for the next lesson, the process capability. So what is a histogram? In fact, a histogram is a statistical descriptive uh, figure, which is describing the frequency rate of a group of data. And it, those data can be discrete or continuous data. There are few, uh, some parameters that we need to know so we can understand the histogram, how it is plot. The range, which is the difference between the minimum and the maximum value in a group of data. The mean, which is the sum of all sample data divided by the sample size. And the standard deviation, which is a measure that is used to quantify the amount of variation or dispersion of a set of data values around the mean. Okay, it sounds a little bit complicated, but all what I need from you to know now that when the standard deviation is small, we should have a closer data distribution to the mean. And when the standard deviation is high, then we should have a more wider data distribution. So if we look to that figure, this is a frequency distribution. So my X axis is my measurement of interest and that X axis is divided into equal interval, while the Y axis is representing the frequency. I believe it will be much better if we go directly to an example in where we can better understand the histogram and the standard deviation. That example says that a physics teacher wants to report the skills level of his students in physics to the school director. He gathered the final exam results for his 15 students and plotted in a histogram chart. So here is the tabulated list of the exams and here is the figure. So if we look to the figure, we will see that the teacher uh, divided uh, the x-axis into intervals of 5%, 55 to 60%, 60 to 65, 70, 65 to the 70 and so on. So as simple as is, he put some condition, he wants to put how many students, for example, got a score between 75 uh, to the 80, or we can, to be more specific, greater than 75% and equal or less than 80% uh, 
he mentioned three students. So we have three students here and between the 80 to the 85%, we have five students. So I believe it's quite simple, uh, that example uh, to understand the histogram. Let's go now to understand more the standard deviation. To calculate first the standard deviation, this is the formula of the standard deviation, which is the square root of the sum of all the differences between each data point in the sample subtracted, uh, we subtracted the mean from each data point to the power of two. So x minus x bar will be equivalent to the 75 minus the 79, it, uh, to the power of two, the square will be 0.17%. And I repeat that equation, that formula for the next, for the rest of the data. Then I take all the sum of that column, which was found to be 11.51%. And the mean, which is the sum of the 15 uh, uh, data divided by 15, it's 79.07%. And my degree of the freedom, which is the sample size minus one, the 15 minus one equal to 14. So if I take the square root of 11.51 divided by 14, it will give me my standard deviation 9.07%. Now to draw my X axis in the histogram, I need first to uh, plot my table, the frequency bin the bin and the frequency. So I will start first with my mean, which I calculated it was 79.07%. Remember that in the six sigma, we have always in the histogram chart, three standard deviation after the mean and three standard deviation before the mean. So the intervals which is represented by the stand, standard deviation will be uh, the uh, as it's shown so 51.8 uh, uh, percent to 60.9 percent to 70 percent to 79 percent and the differences the difference between uh, between each data which is known to be the interval is the standard deviation with 9.07%. Now, we will count all the numbers that are dropping between the uh, each uh, bin and we plot it in our table. So if I want to know how many are the students who got the scores between the uh, uh, 51 to the 60 percent we will find it zero between the 60.9 percent to the 70 percent we will find three between the 70 percent to the 79 percent we will find five and it's a matter to plot those data in our histogram so based on that we will have our histogram or we can call it the data distribution. And my mean value is 79% with a standard deviation of 9.07. I have a minimum result of 62% and a maximum result of 97%. Now remember that we need to make a statement, a final statement about uh, that exercise. So as a final statement, we can conclude that there is a high range in the student skills from 62% to 97% with a standard deviation of 9.07%, while the average score or the mean score of the student is 79%. In fact, the high range might be represented representing a weakness point either that the teacher is not giving the same attention to some students especially those who are having scores less than 80 percent or it might be due to the inherent capabilities 
of the students.